me our special guest in the morning, ladies and gentlemen, a woman, a woman who literally held me spellbound as a youngster. She's still doing it today. Arguably, in fact, definitely the greatest Doctor Who assistant of all time, the fantastic Elizabeth Sladen. <laughs> This is such a treat. Uh, Elizabeth first started travelling through time back in 1973 when she was taken on board the TARDIS by Doctor Who number three, the late great John Pertwee, uh, only to find herself a little while later hanging onto the enormous scarf of Doctor Who number four, the incomparable Tom Baker. Now, 36 years on from her first time travelling voyages, Elizabeth has her own Doctor Who series, The Sarah Jane Adventures, now in its uh, third run, isn't it? We're well, in yeah. the third series. You're the pilot, and since the third series, yeah. it's going out at the moment on BBC One, 4.35 this evening. It's, uh, and it's, it's Thursdays and Fridays, isn't it, they're doing? Yeah. 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 Um, do you enjoy it? I mean, do you, you're, oh, you I, must enjoy it. I so love fantastic. it. I love it. And um, it is a great team in Cardiff. And actually, to be reinvented in the attic is, is fantastic. Did you? I mean, th I mean, there's a long, long gap in between. Yeah. I know you, you got on to lots of other things. And it's because well, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest. I mean, maybe it's the same for you. After Tom Baker, I kind of my interest in Doctor Who. I don't know as I got a bit older. It's just that after Tom Baker, it was such a drop off. No offence to the other actors, but he mm. was so good that it kind of I lost interest in Doctor Who. And uh, I don't know. Do well, you were always hoping it would come back in some form? Well, when has it been gone for so long? I mean, after after Tom left, it was very difficult. You have such a proprietorial hold on a character that you created and a doctor that you were with. It's like the audience, they know their own doctor. You do kind of say, well, you know, that time's gone, I don't actually want to watch that anymore. But when a time has spanned in, in you know, tens of years, 20 years, 30 years, how can it come back? And what they've done in Cardiff, what Russell has done, what Julie has done, to bring it back for this generation, and it's a very much needed time, family yes. entertainment, yeah. is absolutely brilliant, and that I'm a little offshoot of that. I am just clinging on to it. <laughs> <laughs> Klingons, different, different programme. Yes. <laughs> now, you can catch, as you just heard, the Sarah Jane Adventures. I bet everyone watching knows this anyway. It's every Thursday and Friday afternoon over on BBC One. And if you were watching yesterday, you'd have seen Sarah Jane's wedding interrupted by a familiar face. <laughs> But two things there. You're marrying Nigel Haybone. <laughs> <laughs> He's and, a bander, you know. <laughs> and secondly, you're marrying Nigel Haybone. No, but isn't that that's got to be when David comes running in there? David Tennant comes running in. Surely that's uh, an homage to Sean Connery in uh, Prince of Thieves. Stop this wedding. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Is it not? No, not, not in my... I, I, I disregard that. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's one on its own when David comes <laughs> running in. Um, are you a sci-fi fan yourself? Because it must be quite difficult to be involved in storylines if, you, if you're not, I suppose. Oh, dear, I'm not a sci-fi fan. Are you not? <laughs> no, not desperately, because it's so intricate. You've got to be interested in... I was never really interested in what TARDIS meant, time and relative dimension in space. I only learned that after I left. It wasn't important. <laughs> it's about relationships. It is. It's about relationships. About a, a body of people banding together to overcome adversity. Yes. And it's about heroes and... It, it, and if you have all, all the paraphernalia, I'm human in it anyway. Why should I know about it? Well, actually, I, they'll tell me off because Sarah Jane now is far more... Uh, she has her computer and... Uh, yes, well, she, get, she loves, but I'm only playing century. her. I personally, a tin opener, and I don't have a computer. <laughs> but you are, you are used to battling aliens, and oh, looking yes. at our audience, then uh, you won't be frightened <laughs> by any of them. Oh. Ah, go and sit with Jeremy oh. Kyle. See if I care. There's plenty more where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> it was my sonic screwdriver. Now, here's what's happening on today's show. After the ads, finally, apart from money, what would you be prepared to trade your body for? Something money couldn't buy. Uh, tickets to a sellout show. An American woman, she allegedly offered punters a fun time for tickets to a World Series baseball game, which is why we're talking about this. Oh, it's so sad, isn't it? Uh, I would play hide the sausage with you for a chance to see Jimi Hendrix play live. Um, I would. What about you? A chance to be Simon Cowell for the day, dinner with Hardy, or 15 minutes with Kirstie in the privacy of your own booth? <laughs> here, she, here she is with the numbers. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Good morning. <laughs> It's a good job we don't rehearse this show, isn't it? It really is, Matthew. Yeah, I wouldn't be here. If you'd like to contact the show this morning, the number to call, as usual, is 0207 173 5555. Calls will cost a maximum of 10 pence a minute, and that's based on a BT landline call. So your mobile phone charges and other networks may vary. You can also email us, writestuff at 5.tv. 
And if you'd like to send us a text, the number is 800088. Text will cost 25 pence plus your standard network charge. Not all messages will be shown on screen. And always remember to write TWS before your comments. And of course, if you fancy a good old tweet this morning, then send your tweets to twitter.com forward slash five right star. We've got the rest of today's headlines. So with you, right. Elizabeth, what have you got for us? Starting off with the, um, the Daily Telegraph. Shane McNulty can keep £60,000. We'd all love to oh. keep that. He's been allowed to keep almost 60000 he claimed in expenses for a house where his elderly parents lived just eight miles from the main home he shares with his wife. Which in turn was only and five miles from Westminster, so he had two uh, homes within 20 miles. Well, yes, and yesterday he was told by Gordon Brown's... He had Gordon Brown's backing that he can stand at the next election and that people can move on. So, <laughs> God bless Harrow East. <laughs> Put your votes where... It, I mean, it, it, well, it's... it's it, it is going on. It is not going away. Do you and think... Is, do you, do you, what, what, what is... Well, uh, what do you think public feeling is about it now? Because eventually you can bore the public to death over yes. something if you keep bashing mm -hmm. away at it. And I did wonder whether expenses uh, uh, had sort of run its course as a, as, a, as a matter of public interest, but I think that there's still fury out there. General public feel very hard done mm. by their having to cut their costs. Mm. We're all told, you know, we must follow the letter of the law. Mm. So who is above the law? You can't have... You can't have that, but... Um, okay, it's uh, just the, it's not just, it's the mentality as well as the morality of it. It won't go, I don't think it will go, and neither it should, but some good people will, will I'm afraid, get put in with the ones that really should pay yes. the money back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's the one thing that comes through time and time again is the chaos of expenses beforehand, but some of them, and I mean, Nolte's one really does stand out as it really does, 60, quite pounds. sleazy. Uh, anything else then? Yes, oh, another reason to love Brucey. Right, go on I've then. met Bruce Forsyth twice, very briefly, and he really is lovely. And it says here in the Daily Mail, when he found out one of his fans was seriously ill, he took, he took it very, very... He was very concerned. It emerged for three years, the Strictly Come Dancing host set aside an hour each week for a co phone conversation with Gloria Park, mother of two who was suffering from breast cancer. Um, which is just lovely. In the final week of her life, Mr Forsyth phoned every single day. And, say, you know, I don't know who found story, out about it? that, but he wouldn't have put that there. No. I'm sure. And how lovely that someone um, puts something back where, you know, it really matters, and it mattered so much to this woman. He was so invited it's to the... such a big gesture oh, every week. I think it's every so single fantastic. week, an hour aside, and then every single day in the final week of her life. What comfort that must have been. How lovely. It was her dream, wasn't it, when she was first diagnosed? Oh, I find it so... When she was first diagnosed, they asked her, the, yeah. the doctors, what is it you would most like? And she yeah. said, just to, to speak to Bruce Forsyth. And then this went on for three hours. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Anything else? In the Express. Barmy campaign to warn police not to <laughs> slip on leaves. <laughs> well, it's like the Conker story again, isn't it? <laughs> Um, it's a dictate. Thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money will be wasted on this initiative by West Midlands Police. Oh, my God, it's them again. It the ones indeed. that are worried about gang it violence, is. yeah. This is why they're concentrating. <laughs> um, and, and you know, police officers, we do not need to be told that bright sunshine can affect your vision, that rain, ice and snow <laughs> can make underfoot conditions slippery or that rain makes you wet. <laughs> 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 I don't understand. <laughs> Neither do I. I've, I've, missed, I've missed something. <laughs> but that's our money as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well yeah. said. Well yeah. said. Yeah. And finally. Ah, oh, the next one is about bottles of sweets. It's about sweets. It's in the Times. Evidently, um, in this recession time, people want it's like comfort food again. They yeah. want the old sweets to come back, like aniseed balls, sherbet pips, lemon bonbons. But this time, they will be without the additives with potential link to hyperactivity. Boo! Boo! <laughs> Do you know what that means, Matthew? It means that um, Monty Bojangles use natural ingredients, but the aniseed balls will be white instead of red. So it's your a race will... attack, a race <laughs> attack on the aniseed balls. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just hope they bring the lovely big jars back as well. I don't like pick and mix. People, I mean, people's hands in there. <laughs> I want the jars with the screw lids. Let's do the whole thing. But they've thing gone, haven't they? Gone, haven't they? That used to be well. just about every corner shop you went into. Yeah. Every, all the sweets and glass yeah. jars. For our younger viewers, that's what so it was like. That's, not... <laughs> that's really great. Nostalgia the leaves for would scatter <laughs> safely. <laughs> Happy days, although I have to say, I think it's a load of rubbish, don't you? I don't know anybody who eats bonbons or aniseed balls or, or anything like that. No, no you do, Hardy. I love... Well, my mum used to have a corner shop, uh, so obviously... <laughs> do you know what I mean? For me, it's, you know, it's part of my growing up. Um, right. I love all that. What else have we got there? What have we got people? Um, 